We're in East London, we're in Dalston. The left isn't meant to do this. This isn't meant to happen, right? So, I'll be brief. Uh, as James said, the strap line is, no future utopia now. Initially, that might sound like a sort of provocative piece of rhetoric, a bit like fully automated luxury communism, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't. And we decided to use it because we think it actually captures something quite significant about the current moment. So no future, what does that mean? It was said by the Sex Pistols in 1977. It's much loved by Bifo Berardi, no future. <laughs> what does it mean for us anyway? It doesn't mean that we don't think tomorrow's not coming, in a literal sense. It doesn't mean that we're nihilists that live just for today. It means that there is no future under this system. That is to say there is no future in a society built on consent, where wages are falling, where it's harder to rent, it's harder to buy a home, people are living longer, birth rates are declining. That means we are on the cusp of a social catastrophe. And social catastrophes or crises don't actually always look very sexy, you know? We think of it being like shattered gr gr glass. Everything changes. Riots, insurrection, flames. You know, this is sort of American anarchist conceptual war crisis. It sounds good, right? Yeah. It sounds great. <laughs> Often crisis doesn't look like that. Often what it looks like instead is normal reproduction, food banks, uh, underemployment, not having the kind of life you want to live. So that's what crisis really looks like. And no future within that paradigm means living standards which are getting worse for everybody pretty much everywhere. And even that one thing, that economic crisis which started in 2008, and I'll be really brief, was the first crisis of six. <laughs> no, because it gets, it gets really depressing, right? <laughs> that economic model which collapsed 10 years ago was the leading edge of a hurricane, the end of neoliberalism, which it was. And the five that come after it are aging, demographic change, climate change, resource scarcity, global surplus populations, whole swathes of the global south not being able to get work or water or sustenance, and finally automation, which brings into question a bunch of dynamics inherent to capitalism. These are five crises, all as big as the one that has just defined the last 10 years. So put together, we have a secular challenge to the status quo. There is no future for our system. Now, let's get a bit more optimistic. Utopia now, what does that mean? I won't bore you with the etymology of utopia. I'll leave that to James Butler. <laughs> the, the, the etymological origins of utopia. Does it mean no place? Does it mean this place or that? I don't care. The reason why people historically, the reason why people historically have chosen to write utopias is because they're trying to write a satire or a critique of the society they live in. So Thomas More was critiquing Henry VIII's England when he talked about his island communist paradise. Uh, William Morris wrote news from nowhere as he lived among the satanic mills of Victorian industrial England. So often the impulse to utopia is a yearning for something else. But more than that, actually, I think the present moment of no future doesn't just mean that utopian thinking is useful. It is necessary. It is necessary because there is nothing to come after the present conjuncture. And what does come either gets a lot better or it gets a lot worse. So if we aren't utopian, we succumb to barbarism. So the question I want to pose to all of you here is what is your utopia? And I, I have a, a bunch of things in my head about what utopia is. They sounded batshit five years ago, and guess what? They sound a lot less batshit now, right? They, they still sound really batshit. A world beyond fossil fuels, uh, a world where housing, education, healthcare, transport aren't commodities for exchange, but human rights. Hey, that's pretty good. A world where automation, the dividend of technology is given over to people rather than profit. That to me is utopia. So that's the question I want to ask all of you here. Not literally, okay? <laughs> Rhetorically. There's no open mic. No, there's no open mic. What's your utopia? And can it be achieved in five years? And if it can't, what will be achieved in five years? Because as Oscar Wilde said, progress is perpetually stepping from one utopia to another. The bar closes at four o'clock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have a great time.